Bus accidents like this one are big news. From the air, you can see the impact. But if you watch a crash unfold from inside the bus, you get a whole different perspective on the chaos. This is a rollover simulation provided by IMMI. The Westfield, Indiana company is the world's largest maker of child restraint components and home to one of the most sophisticated crash test labs in the country. It's also the company that supplied this new bus to Heritage Christian School in Indianapolis. Now, Indiana does not have a law requiring lap shoulder belts on school buses, but Heritage Christian has been using them for eight years anyway. The last thing I want to do is to go to a hospital or, heaven forbid, a, a funeral home and say, we could have maybe protected your child. I want to sleep at night. Ron Young is Human Resources Manager at Heritage Christian. When IMMI told Young it wanted to test seatbelts on the Heritage bus fleet, it did not take Young long to make up his mind. I guess I looked at it as, what's the price of a kid's life? Um, and I wanted to make sure that I could look at a parent and say, I made that decision because I wanted another brand new bus. No. I want, it's, we're all about the kids. Today, Heritage has lap shoulder belts on all eight of its buses. Now, Heritage can't buy new buses as often as it used to, and new ones cost $7,500 more than buses without belts, about $87,000. But transportation manager Miriam Goodman could not be happier. We tell our kids that we love them. That's why we have the seatbelts. We love them, and we want to protect them, and we want to keep them safe because we treat them like our own. Goodman has been to the IMMI lab. That's where she saw a simulation of a rollover crash, the kind of accident in which lap shoulder restraints may have real value. If they have a rollover, those backpacks are going to go, pssst, you know, and the kids are going to be in their seat. You're not going to have backpacks of kids and hitting each other and, and uh, hurting. Here in Ohio, this now famous video of a Circleville bus rolling over is stoking debate about buses and seat belts at the State House. The children are like human missiles. They just fly across the, the, uh, the school bus. So clearly, our buses are not safe in case of that kind of an accident. 68th District Representative Kathleen Chandler has penned House Bill 448. It requires lap shoulder belts in every new or refurbished school bus by the year 2014. It does not require any district to retrofit their existing buses. It requires every Ohio school district to adopt a disciplinary policy for students who don't wear seatbelts. And it gives immunity from lawsuits to districts if students hurt in an accident did not have their seatbelt fastened. It seemed very strange that children are wearing seatbelts all of the time in their cars, even coming home from the hospital. Um, and we didn't have them in schools. Chandler is taking some heat. Last June, her bill passed unanimously out of committee. That happened the very day a Zanesville kindergartner died in a bus crash. But the bill has yet to come to a vote in the full House. Opponents argue the measure is too costly. The Ohio Legislative Service Commission estimates a single new bus equipped with lap shoulder belts might cost $15,000 more than it does now. Opponents also say districts will have to hire aides to get the children buckled in. Chandler disagrees. I don't buy the idea that they need to monitor, walk the children to the seat and buckle them in. Uh, kids learn how to handle those seat belt buckles when they're very young. They do it every day at home in their cars. <laughs> Go to the first available seat and buckle up. At Heritage Christian, they use the buddy system. Older children help their younger peers buckle in, and the driver is there to help, too. And Miriam Goodman says routes don't take any longer than they did before the students wore belts. I really haven't had a, t had a time where I'd have to say, oh, I have to add five minutes to this stop because there's a large group of kids getting on, and they need to buckle up. And so that it's, it's the large group of kids getting on to sit down. Uh, and I would, I would adjust the time because of that. It's never considering, you know, how long is it going to take them to buckle up. The speed of an evacuation is also a concern for critics. Several Dayton area transportation directors we surveyed for this story were fearful a fire on a bus with belts would trap students. It was one of the first concerns Goodman raised, a problem solved with training on how to use a simple seat belt cutter safe enough to pass from student to student. We take the belt itself. That's wrapped around the kid, and we it's very it'll slice right through the buckle, just like this, and it'll slice right through. Heritage touts one other byproduct of seat belts, something they believe comforts every driver. Once you have the the uh, seat belts on, the bus driver can pay more attention to driving the bus 
instead of looking in the mirror and watching the kids and worrying about their safety, they're where they belong in their seats. In the end, the team at Heritage Christian and Representative Chandler are convinced the districts can find a way to pay for seat belts on buses. A child's life is so precious that how can we how can we argue otherwise? But Representative Chandler does not have much time left to get her bill to a vote. Her term in the State House ends this year.